Now that we are far back, welcome back to some more Stormworks. I'm Stormrunner Gaming, and today I am standing in front of the Arctic Storm, the large 4x4 off-roading truck that I designed a little while ago here on the channel. I'm standing in front of it because I've changed up a little bit of the panels on the front here. And you guys know that the instrument panel update came and went last week, but this week they updated it with two more things, the radial segment and bar segment, and they threw a couple Couple extra things into the Friday update but those are gonna be the two things I'm gonna be focusing on here for a tutorial on and if you guys are wondering I'm only going to be doing the on off parts of the radial and the bar segment here I'm not going to be doing the number version of it and I'll show you guys what I mean in a second here but as you can see I have fuel and the battery here being represented by a bar segment going up we can also have the radio segment, which is basically the same exact thing here, but you have a circle with eight different pies in it. So I'm going to throw this back to the workshop and show you guys what I'm all about here. So as we got into the latest update with the instrument panels here, we have different instruments that we can change the type of. And now we have the bar and radial segment here. So if we really quickly want to switch over to the radio segment, we can see that it is a, a cool circle that you can customize with colors here. So you can pick your additive mode and change the colors around to whatever you want. You can make it an orange or you can make it the different colors to show what is being controlled there, like our fuel. But the thing here that I wanted to show is each of these segmental values here can be displayed in numbers or by an on-off signal. And I've designed mine on numbers just because I wanted to set myself a challenge here because the on-off is a little bit easier. And of course, if you guys do want me to do a tutorial on the numbers value here instead of the on-off for the bar and radio segments here, just leave a comment down below and I should get to that soon, hopefully. But anyway, I'm gonna start with a brand new platform here. And we're gonna actually put down one of those instrument panels. All right, so now that we have a battery and instrument panel here, we're gonna go into our select mode there again, go into the instrument one, and I'm gonna change it over to a bar segment. And we're gonna keep this one on channel one direction up, and we're gonna switch this over to the on off. The second one as well, we're gonna change over to a radial segment just to show you guys that it works the same and switch over to the on off. Three and four are just gonna be none here because we aren't measuring anything else. So let's put that down and I want something to measure here. So we're gonna put a regular throttle lever there and leave it there for a second. So really quick before I forget, I'm going to connect up the battery power to both of these guys. And we're going to have to create a microcontroller here to control this thing here. Alright, this is the microcontroller that we need to control the radial segment or bar segment there. And this is everything you'll need for the on-off values there. But I'm going to create a brand new one and walk through all of the stuff here. So for right now, I'm going to name this bar segment controller and give it a two by one width to length with two nodes in here. And the first node is going to be a inputted number from that throttle that you have. And the second one is going to be a composite output that we're going to be sending back to that thing that's holding them excuse me the instrument panel but this is where we start to have a few problems so um, the first thing we need to do is set up a fx expression so like an algebraic expression of negative x plus one and if anyone is wondering what that does it's taking the value giving us the negative part of it and then adding one so it is compatible with the way I am creating this. So next we are going to need eight thresholds here. And once we have all of those done, we're also going to need a composite right here with on off values there and we're going to want an eight channel count. 
And then once you're done with all of that, you can connect up the composite to the output there. And composite is done. You can take the output from the FX here, from that little equation, and connect it up to all of your threshold gates. As well, we can connect up each threshold gate to its respective input there, and to the composite on off right, so that we have all that done. Now the last thing we need to do here is set up the values for the thresholds and basically what we are doing with these thresholds is creating an on off signal for which light we want turned on and off for the bar or radial segment. So if we are using a throttle with zero at the bottom or and one at the top then it isn't as bad as if you have a custom number here. So we start with 0, 0 at the bottom and 0, 1 at the top. And now we are going to start changing stuff as values of 7. So this is 1 of 7, 2 of 7, 3 of 7, 4 of 7, 5 of 7, 6 of 7, and finally 7 of 7 up here. So let's quickly get those numbers. I'm going to actually have to use a calculator, but I'll be right back with that and I will read off the numbers for you guys. All right, so here are our values for all of those. We have from 1 to 0, 0, 0 0.86, 0, 0, 0.71, 0, 0.57, 0, 0.43, 0, 0.29, and 0, 0.14. And all of these numbers, the point whatevers, are the high numbers on here. All the low ones here are 0. So now that that is all done, you can save it up there. But now we need to go and put it on whatever vehicle you are using here. So grab your microcontroller, place it on there, and we we're going to first grab that number and connect it up, and then take the composite value and connect it to the single, the signal input, excuse me, for the instrument panel. And make sure, oh, power it to that. And now that that is done, we can spawn that in. So right now it is a value of zero. So we have that one bar or that top piece of the pie there for the radial one. And if we give it a higher throttle, it, the bars will keep lighting up until we have a full one where the circle is complete and the bar goes all the way up to the blue there. So now let's quickly take it back to the workshop here. And let's say if we wanted to connect up the battery power to this instead of the throttle, and we're gonna to need to go in and really quickly, I'm going to grab an electric motor here so that we can basically tax that battery so it drains pretty quickly. Let me connect this up here with the propeller as well so it uses a little bit of power and we'll connect it to that throttle we have here. So let's spawn this guy in. And right now the battery should be showing, yep, we have full battery power on here. But once we start this up, as we can see, as the battery is losing power, we're going to slowly lose each one of those bars on here because each threshold is going down slowly and slowly because those little chunks are not getting met because it is not at 100% power. Um, we're going to lose 6 sevenths power or 86% power in a second here. I probably should have put on a bigger motor, but... You guys get the idea that once we keep losing power, this will go down, just like the throttle right here. Because they both are number inputs, they won't be too bad. So, also, if you guys want to do this for a fuel gauge here, I'm going to quickly show that off as well. So I'm going to quickly grab a fuel tank, a large fuel tank here, and put it down right here. So now, first off, we're going to have to figure out how much fuel we actually have with a regular old dial. And I say we need to figure out how much fuel we have because we're actually going to have to go into that microprocessor and change around a value to show how much fuel or just basically to change it around to make it work. And that is a little bit of a problem, but not too much so we have 703.13 so now that we know that number exactly we can go into here and instead of that battery we can connect up that fuel tank to the controller here so now let's go into our select mode and edit this microcontroller 
And for our FX of expression here, instead of adding 1, we're going to add 703.13, the exact value from the fuel tank. So now that that is done, we can update the microcontroller and spawn it in. And as it is fuel right now, it is fuel, excuse me, it is full right now. We are getting the full thing there. Did I read off the right value? I'm not exactly sure why that is there, but I probably got the value off by a tiny bit. So if you do have the value off by one or two, uh, you can easily remeasure that, go back into the microcontroller and fix it. 703.13 so let me make sure I've got that number exactly in there so real quick while I am fixing the system here I have found one interesting thing the more decimal points you can get onto that FX thing in your microcontroller the better it will work because if you don't have it exact as far as you can get it then that top bar will not light up there so we need to connect it up to a um, this guy over here the digital display and figure out our exact decimal point value as far as we can get it So it's 0.125. So we take it back there Put that value in there Put one two five there and we should get that top bar lighting up now instead of Every single one except that one. Yep, and it is fixed now. So if you guys do have an exact source of fuel then you need that exact decimal point number to go in here to make that all light up and of course as we lose fuel here this guy is going to drain just like the system for battery and fuel that I've set up on the Arctic Storm and if you guys do want to pick that up I am going to update the version on there with the latest instrument panel version but anyways, that is the tutorial for today. So if you guys do have any questions on this um this cool little thing, leave them in the comments down below or be don't, don't be afraid to ask me on the community Discord that I have with links on the channel here. But yeah, anyways, that is where I am going to end. So if you guys like this, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Stay up with Stormworks and more of my content, but I've never been great. Goodbye. So people need me and I need to go.